The legislation will require all new buildings yet to receive planning permission to ensure a large percentage of their energy comes from renewable sources. It came into effect at the start of the year. Principally in Gibraltar for the kind of uh, the buildings that we have here, what we're looking at is rooftop solar photovoltaic. And um, there may also be an element of solar thermal, which is for, for hot water. Um, and also the use of air source heat pumps, for example. Um, but principally, I think it's, it's going to be PV um, with the way technology stands today. Previously, there was no fixed percentage required to be installed, though the Development and Planning Commission would sometimes impose conditions of 20%. The legislation will also require new buildings to meet new energy efficiency ratings. So that scale relates to um, what is on the energy performance certificate, um, which runs from an A to a G. And both of those um, scores, both a 20 and a 12, would fall within the A-band rating. Um, but previously, the A-band rating was from 25 upwards. So it's a step up. It's a tightening of the standards. It's a more stringent requirement. And the way it's calculated is that um, basically the software takes on board various um, facets of the building, so the geography, insulation, your building services, um, and it performs a calculation based on standard occupancy patterns, and it produces a standard for that building, which is, um, it's modeled, obviously, it's not the, the actual energy use of the building, but it provides you with a benchmark for that type of building. And so the bands just reflect that increased um, standard that we have now for these types of buildings. And how will new buildings meeting these requirements compare to projects we've seen over recent years? So at the moment, the standard is for new buildings, or the standard was that it had to achieve a B rating, which in, in terms of numbers would be a rating of 50 or less. So you can see that uh, taking it up to 20 and 12 is a significant improvement. Um, in fairness, a lot of the larger developments are already aiming to meet or were already aiming to meet the A rating, which would be 25 or less. Um, in terms of renewables, we are seeing um, more and more new buildings incorporating them, but not perhaps to the extent that we would like to see. So this will really um, force them to, to think hard about maximizing their roof space and making sure that the building is as energy efficient as possible in order that that percentage is as achievable as possible. It will be up to developers and contractors to incorporate these requirements into their plans. True renewables, the, the sources we've got are predominantly solar and uh, wind. We've got massive limitations with wind power in Gibraltar, we just can't put up wind turbines. And solar, we also limited by the size of our roofs. The only way this kind of step in the right direction is going to work and, and hit anywhere near those numbers is with uh, power storage on site, battery storage or something along those lines where your, your solar panel or your mini wind turbine is generating and charging all day for you to use that energy when you get home. It's uh, certainly very favourable and very nice to have these, uh, these sustainable initiatives and legislation. I think it's been a long time coming. But I do think it's extremely ambitious and perhaps we're not ready for that, that level of renewable technology. I think the question of cost is an interesting one. Uh, it's probably too early to know exactly what uh, the implications will be, but certainly from a life cycle cost perspective, um, more sustainable developments do tend to actually be beneficial to both tenants and landlords in the long run. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of evidence to suggest that the capital expenditure in the short term, um, in terms of the actual construction and development, uh, increases and as such, that's just something that we'll have to be mindful of. The developers we spoke to say that they will need to conduct more research. But for now, a guidance document is available on the government's website.